Hello, hello, welcome to my smart contract auditing beginner roadmap video, where I'll be going over some of the learning resources I used and I'll talk about some of my experiences as well in the Web3 bug bounty space. Now I am pretty new to Web3 security, but I have recently made some good progress from participating in audit contests on Code Arena. So I thought it would be a good time to share some of that experience and I think it'll be valuable for those who are new to the space to hear this from someone who's also relatively new just to give that perspective and more importantly, give hope to those people who want to start participating in this uh, let them know that this is possible to make progress there is a lot of opportunity here and i think it'll become obvious as i go over some of the uh, various opportunities and um, the things that are available uh, for you if you want to get into web3 security just a bit of background about myself. I am a penetration tester in traditional cybersecurity. So my day-to-day -day is performing network and web application penetration tests and writing reports. So internal, external network penetration tests, uh, web application penetration tests, those are sort of the bread and butter of what I do day-to-day. -day. I do understand a little bit about the crypto space but nothing substantial before this and I have not looked into web3 security uh, before starting this I did get my OACP last year in case someone asks if the OACP was helpful now the most helpful thing was probably the try harder mentality I hate to say it but being comfortable with feeling dumb is probably something that is very helpful when learning something new and that mindset did help uh, for me when going through uh, some of the learning resources and reading reports that I didn't quite understand yet. So I've been on Code Arena for two months and recently got my biggest payout on the platform for a high severity finding which was worth 3k and I'm currently ranked 36 on the 60 day leaderboard with in total two high severity findings and one medium severity finding. Now before I talk about the code arena stuff, I'll just quickly mention there is also another bug bounty platform in Web3 which is Immunify and they are offering some very massive bounties up to the 10 million for Wormhole and MakerDAO. And some of these bounties have actually been paid out recently. So just a couple of months ago, the wormhole bug bounty paid out for $10 million based on an uninitialized proxy issue. I mean, if you read this report, it's just like, are you serious? $10 million for this? I mean, this is pretty much straight out of a CTF. And this is as bad as leaving default creds on something exposed to the internet like it's just that bad and relatively simple to find um, something like this paying out 10 million it kind of goes to show that there's just not that many eyeballs in this space and there's a lot of opportunity to be had right and also this one which happened just two weeks ago uh, which is aurora labs paying out six million these are some record-breaking bug bounty rewards and there's no way that you'll be able to find these type of rewards in the traditional bug bounty space where even places like Zerodium, if you want to go gray hat and you sell zero days from Microsoft, you only get around 1 million for those zero days, which I'm pretty sure is way harder to find compared to bugs in uh, the Web3 space. So Code Arena is a pretty unique way to do bug bounties where it's not strictly a bug bounty platform they call it an audit contest so how that works is a contest will run between three to seven days for example and there will be a fixed prize Usually the prizes are between 30k to around 100k and by the end of that one week period the full prize is guaranteed to be paid out to all the participants who submitted findings during that uh, audit contest. Now the prizes are 
shared between the findings that you submit. So if you submitted high severity findings, you'd get a bigger share of the prize pool uh, compared to mediums and lows. And you also get payouts uh, if your submission is a duplicate. So essentially when a duplicate happens, you just get a share of the prize that is allocated to that particular finding. Overall, there is less competition on Code Arena. I mean, honestly, it feels like almost every round is like a very lucrative private bug bounty program. There are only about 200 participants on Code Arena who have ever received a prize off it. And every competition, usually we get about 30 to 60 participants at the moment. Now last year it was even less people, usually around 10 people per contest. So last year people were really raking it in um, on Code Arena. Every competition is mostly based on a new project, so you're pretty much looking at a fresh code base. So you're almost guaranteed to find something on every competition, which is great for people who are new into the space where if you're looking at a traditional bug bounty, it's extremely hard to find anything. And when you actually find something, it's probably a duplicate finding. So fresh code base every competition is really great for people who are new in the space. And I mean, you get paid for duplicates, so you're almost guaranteed to get payout even if you are new. And the final good thing about Code Arena is all reports are public. So you get that feedback loop where you can see all the findings that other people submitted once the report is published. Uh, you can review those reports and continuously improve your process uh, so you can start finding those bugs that you missed as well. So it kind of looks like this. Uh, currently there are two competitions running at this time. Both of those were, I think, three-day competitions and paying around 50,000. Recently, the amount of contests have been going up on Code Arena as well. Sometimes I've, the most I've seen is five contests running at the same time with hundreds of thousands of dollars in each of these contests. So for me, the learning resources I used were based on this very good blog post by C. Michel on his blog, How to Become a Smart Contract Auditor. He published this post sometime last year, and based on that, there was a big influx of people who came to Code Arena. So this is sort of the rough guideline of how I approached learning this material. He's currently ranked one on the all-time leaderboard with 1.1 million in awards. And he's been doing this for about just over a year full time. I did see he made another blog post recently where he documented the hourly rate he was getting on Code Arena. When he first started last year, when there was less competition, even less than now, he was getting about $3,000 an hour and currently it's hovering around $500 an hour. So based on that blog post, the main areas of focus for auditing smart contracts is learning about the Solidity language, learning about DeFi basics, and also traditional finance basics. So I'll go over some of the learning resources for each. For Solidity, I would recommend people who are familiar with CTFs to go through these CTFs first to learn about the language and get your feet wet in the space. So there are essentially three main CTFs uh, available. They are Damn Vulnerable DeFi, the Ether Naught Challenges, and also Capture the Ether. For me, I looked at Damn Vulnerable DeFi first because that was just the first one I saw someone post on Twitter, which got me interested in this space. But I would actually recommend people do the Ether Not Challenges first because that's probably the easier of the three to get started with. And there are plenty of video walkthroughs of the Ether Not Challenges. One I would recommend is D squared. So he has all the Ether Not Challenge levels, one to 26 on his YouTube channel. They're all about 20 to 30 minutes long. So very detailed walkthroughs. He also talks about his learning process as he does the challenges as well. So that's really great for the beginner. 
Capture the Ether is around the same level of difficulty as the Ether Not Challenges. I actually haven't done Capture the Ether, I just briefly looked at it and saw that it did have a lot of overlap between Ether Not Challenges. So I didn't actually go through Capture the Ether Challenges, but that's definitely one you can look into as well. And finally, there's the Damn Vulnerable DeFi Challenge which is probably the hardest of the three. I did most of the challenges in Damn Vulnerable DeFi, but I didn't finish them. I don't think it's necessary for you to do all the challenges, but just enough to get your feet wet and start to understand some of the vulnerabilities in Solidity. So the next thing I would recommend is going through a Solidity tutorial if you're not very familiar with the language. I actually switched back and forth between doing the tutorial and also doing the CTF challenges because I found that was very helpful in first understanding something and then applying it in the CTF. So a great Solidity tutorial you can go through is the one by Patrick Collins on Free Code Camp. You can find the full videos on YouTube. He released a Python version uh, earlier this year based on the Brownie framework. And recently he just uploaded a JavaScript framework uh, version of that as well using Hardhat. And that one is over 30 hours long. So plenty of material to go through. Now, you don't need to go through all of the course if you are just interested in the security aspects. I think it's best for you to just uh, get enough to understand the language uh, to finish the CTF challenges. And then after that, you can always refer back to the tutorial if you don't understand something. You don't want to be trapped in tutorial hell here. Just uh, go through, uh, obtain the various pieces of information you need to complete your challenges and then move on and then use this as a reference point later on when you uh, find you don't understand a particular concept. So for DeFi basics, a link that I saw shared around a lot is teachyourselfcrypto.com. The blog post from C. Michelle mentions these five points to understand from DeFi, which are token contracts, proxies, master chef, a compound, and Uniswap version 2. So Teach Yourself Crypto pretty much covers these topics, not to a very high technical detail, but to the level where if you're not familiar with DeFi, um, then it'll pretty much get you up to speed on what the use case is, what is it actually trying to do, how the system is designed and so forth. Uh, because previously when I first got into Code Arena and I was looking at the Solidity code, sometimes I just didn't even know what the hell I was looking at because I didn't understand the DeFi basics of what the code was actually trying to do. So at least get yourself familiar with these five main points of DeFi. For token contracts, you would also encounter them during CTFs and the free code camp solidity uh, tutorial. For proxies, you will also encounter them in CTFs. For the MasterChef algorithm, I would recommend you watching the synthetic staking rewards contract explain video on YouTube. This video is made by the Smart Contract Programmer. You can just search that title on YouTube and you'll find that video series. Um, that'll pretty much explain the math behind the Master Chef contract and staking rewards, which is pretty hard to understand if you are not um, that into math anymore, which probably most of us aren't. And finally, for the finance basics, the Khan Academy course is a good option to learn about traditional finance concepts. Now, for me, I won't be able to give too much of a perspective on this because I actually came from a finance background before I moved to IT. So I don't know how much of that experience has actually helped me in the course of auditing Solidity and smart contracts. But I did briefly look at this course and it does seem like a good course that's gonna pretty much cover most of the points that you need to understand. Now the course is pretty long, so I wouldn't recommend just doing all this in one go. Again, same as the Solidity tutorial, use this as a reference point to 
reference back to it rather than just viewing it all in one setting and then pretty much forgetting about it once you're done with the course. So after that, your training is done and you'll want to start to apply what you have learned in actual audit contests and reading previous audit reports to understand the findings that other people have found and just slowly build up that mental mind map of the various vulnerabilities that you may encounter. A great resource for actually getting into audit findings is Securium. So Securium has a website where they have various blog posts where they talk about Ethereum 101, Solidity 101, security pitfalls and best practices, audit techniques and audit findings. The most useful material I found on Securium was the audit findings 101 and 102 which got me used to starting to read and understand past audit reports and uh, start to digest some of this uh, knowledge that uh, was from the previous learning resources. Again, shout out to D Squared here where he documented his journey going through the Securium material. If you find the Securium materials a bit dry to read through, I would definitely recommend watching D Squared's videos and then going back to reading the Securium findings. And finally, after you've gone through all that, you can start reading the previous audit reports on Code Arena. So a couple of tricks I used to understand these previous audit reports when I first started reading them is Go through the low risk and non-critical issues findings first on those reports because those are very easy to understand even if you are very new and starting to understand those findings first will get you into a participating in contest and start that positive feedback loop where you are continuously reading reports and uh, applying what you learned in order contests. The next thing you want to do is try to understand the high and medium severity findings that are duplicate reports. So essentially what that means is find those findings where you see a bunch of different wardens have also found them. Then go to that uh, particular GitHub repo and pull out the other wardens findings and start to review those findings from multiple wardens point of view because sometimes if you read a finding if you don't quite understand it that warden probably didn't describe it in a way that resonated with you so viewing the findings from different writers really helped to paint a clearer picture to what that finding actually is and i found it really helped when the finding that was in the final report didn't make sense but other wardens provided a better explanation for that particular finding and finally you will go to the high and medium findings that are unique findings so this is pretty much the ultimate goal when you're participating in code arena is start to find unique high and medium findings yourself and the first step in doing that is understanding all those unique findings in the previous order reports. Now this is pretty much still an ongoing process for me. In my last video I mentioned um, I pretty much understood all the reports now which is actually not true I came to find out recently because I did encounter some findings where I just really couldn't get my head around. So this is still an ongoing process for me to understand these high and uh, medium unique findings. So this is sort of my progress on Code Arena so far for the first two months. When I first started on Code Arena, I was only submitting QA and gas optimization reports for my first five to 10 order contests. During this time, I was going through some of the learning resources I mentioned previously, reading past audit reports, and slowly building up that uh, knowledge of previous uh, findings. And after two to three weeks of this, I started to notice uh, some medium severity issues when I am just looking through the code. Now I would just mention that uh, for submitting QA and gas optimization reports, you may be tempted to run an automated tool such as Slither or just grab out the various points of interest and only submitting those for the QA and gas optimizations. But 
I would recommend against it. So I started off by doing that, running automated tools and then just submitting those as my findings for the order competitions. But I found that it was more helpful to actually read the code manually yourself. Not because that is actually gonna be better for you to find more QA or gas optimization findings, but reading more code and just literally like parsing it with your eyes is very good in terms of getting more used to reading Solidity and the various patterns it uses. Um, so you, once you start to read more previous audit reports, you'll literally start to pick up on these patterns during uh, reading through the code. So the purpose of reading through the code is one, to find these QA and gas optimization issues. And second of all, uh, once you are more familiar with the previous um, audit findings, um, you'll be able to pick up on these patterns and actually slowly see where these potential medium severity findings are, which is what I found happened uh, after about two to three weeks, I started to see some of these potential medium severity issues as I was looking for QA issues. And that was when I started submitting medium severity issues. And after one month, I got my first medium severity issue confirmed. And that was for a payout of a 290 or so dollars. So I pretty much just repeated that process kept reading more audit reports and participating in uh, audit contests until about 1.5 months I started to see some potential pathways for high severity findings and I got my high severity finding confirmed recently and that was amazingly a 3k payout so Super happy with the progress that I've made in just uh, two months on this platform. I'm honestly pretty surprised that, you know, for someone who is uh, pretty new to this, uh, to be able to get on the leaderboard and get a high severity finding payout for this much um, just in two months. So it kind of goes to show that the level of competition in Web3 bounties is not as high as a traditional uh, bug bounty platforms because in terms of skill, I mean, I would probably rate my web app and network penetration skills higher than my Solidity auditing skills at the moment because just from the amount of time that I spent in traditional penetration tests, right? But however, I think if I tried my hand at a traditional bug bounty platform, I doubt I would be able to get the kind of payouts that I am getting now um, in Web3 instead. So my future goals on Code Arena, I want to read all the past audit reports from Code Arena. So they have about 100 reports and I've gone through about 30 to 40 of those reports already. So I want to finish reading all of those reports in the next couple of months. I want to understand and categorize all the findings. So in a previous video, I showed how I categorized the Securium findings. They had 200 of them. Now categorizing them into your notes, to into buckets that are similar sort of groupings of, of vulnerabilities. That really helped me understand the Securium findings, and also for these Code Arena findings, I've started to notice patterns like, I'll go over some findings in previous videos, and once my uh, high level severity finding report actually gets published, I'll talk more findings then, but pretty much I have started to see um, patterns where uh, similar findings happen very frequently in Code Arena contests. So, those are the findings that I am uh, more focused on because you're more likely to find them and they're easier to spot based on all the previous examples of vulnerable code that you can see in the previous order reports. And I also want to spend more time per audit contest, right? So at the moment, I am devoting more time in reading these order reports and learning rather than spending time per order contest. So I am potentially still leaving a lot of money on the table at this point. 
just in terms of um, I'm not spending that much time on the contest itself. I'm trying to sort of blitz through the contest, just to snipe all the low hanging fruit issues that I can find very quickly. And I want to spend more time that I can devote into this um, on reading previous order reports, which I feel that is going to be providing me more value uh, down the road and finding more unique high severity and medium findings. And also keep climbing the leaderboard. Currently I am about 5k in rewards and 30 something on the 60 day leaderboard. I want to keep climbing the leaderboard and see how far I can push this. It's a pretty fun side project that I'm doing and yeah it's interesting and pretty motivating to be getting these payouts and finally i want to share all my findings and experience on this youtube channel of my progress on code arena i think it's going to really help a lot of people um, get into the space and just leave a trail of breadcrumbs for people who uh, want to up their skills in the web3 security space and yeah get a share of uh, the opportunity that is out there. Now to close this off, a bit of motivation. So this is a shout out to V, who is relatively new into this field and he has been making some massive progress and really props to him to getting where he is today. So you can see he posted this on the Code Arena Discord in February 2022. He's been in Code Arena for one month and he's already on the leaderboard with 4.5k. And just four months previous to that, he was pretty much zero knowledge in uh, smart contracts and uh, solidity. So this is to show that it is possible to make really quick progress in this field. It's not just me. I'm pretty surprised at how fast I've been able to climb the leaderboard on Code Arena and you know, other people are doing it too. So uh, this is just a bit of motivation for people who uh, want to get in and uh, unsure uh, of uh, whether they can. So you can see the potential opportunity here to climb the leaderboard pretty quickly and sort of make a name for yourself in Web3 security. And where is Dravi now? He is 10th on the leaderboard with 69k paid out this year. So big props to him and hope this is a motivation for people who are new to the space. It definitely motivated me as well, just to see someone has done it in the past and they've done it with a relative quickness. So there it is, um, examples of people being uh, pretty successful in this field in a relatively short period of time. So to close this off, I am happy to answer any questions in the comments uh, down below. I do look forward to providing you guys with more update on my progress on Code Arena on this channel. So subscribe if you want to see more videos on this. So yeah, that's it. Hope to see you guys in the arena. Reach out if you have any questions when you're going through any of the learning resources I mentioned. Do share your own experience as well. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.